Joining me now to go long is Will Scharf, attorney for President Trump, former federal prosecutor. He's running for AG in Missouri. And my great pal Byron York, chief political correspondent at the Washington Examiner and Fox News contributor. Gentlemen, uh, welcome. Uh, all right, Will, I'm going to let you take a whack at it. I've tried. I'm not a lawyer, but I've read and read and read. I even read Byron's political commentary on these trials <laughs> and try to understand it. How about that, Byron? I've always read you. Look, Will, I don't understand. reading, Larry. I don't understand the Bragg trial or the Bragg chart. I don't understand it because there's no conspiracy. Uh, Non-disclosure is not illegal. The candidate used his personal funds. Checks were written. Checks were cashed. I mean, I just don't get any of it. And now it's some vast conspiracy uh, to overturn the 2016 election. I don't get that, Will Sharp. So, you know, give us a little quick... Uh, I mean, what is it? What is this? What? How can an ordinary juror figure this out? Yeah, look, the biggest problem with this case is that President Trump did absolutely nothing wrong and should have obviously never been indicted. We're talking about business records entries made in 2017 that accurately reflected payments that President Trump made to his own lawyer. Uh, Alvin Bragg's trying to concoct some sort of election rigging scheme from 2016 that so far the facts in court, the facts actually in evidence just haven't borne out at all. Uh, but that's the basic problem here. That's why this case should have never been brought in the first place. There is no underlying crime. There was no conspiracy. And I think that's going to play out in court in the coming weeks. And I think Alvin Bragg's going to have major egg on his face here. Yeah, but Bragg, just one more. Bragg and Colangelo brought in from Washington with a Biden connection, if you ask me. But anyway, that's another issue. Those guys are breathlessly talking about this new, this new conspiracy argument. Okay, that's the lay. They finally, what um, somebody said, two misdemeanors is supposed to equal a felony. So now it's a conspiracy argument. What exactly was the conspiracy? <clears throat> Well, that's the thing. In, in opening arguments, Colangelo said that Trump had engaged in a criminal conspiracy to corrupt the 2016 election, and then he covered it up. Now, the cover-up is the bookkeeping stuff, and we actually do know about that. That's what uh, uh, Trump is actually charged with. But the criminal conspiracy is where it gets really, really murky. Uh, and in court, another one of the lawyers said that uh, the, the other law that Trump broke to, to, to uh, justify elevating this into a felony. That other law was New York law. I think it's 15172. Oh, my gosh. And uh, that law, <laughs> that law makes it illegal uh, to promote an election by unlawful means. But it leaves the unlawful means undefined. And so w what we have here is, is every day prosecutors are in court uh, suggesting, hinting that there's a deep, dark, criminal mm. conspiracy going on here. Uh, and it will be the job of the Trump lawyers to say, look, there's nothing there. It's not illegal. The conspiracy was to get elected, which is another word for campaigning. Right. That's, campaigning's not illegal. <clears throat> Non-disclosure stuff is not illegal. I'm still trying to figure... Look, uh, Will Scharf, I'll read from the Wall Street Journal editorial today, OK? Todd Blanche, Mr. Trump's lawyer, said in his opening remarks that the ledger entries were done by an accountant named Deb, Deb Tarasoff. She's going to testify later, I guess. She was told when she got the invoice from Mr. Cohn to call it a legal expense, which is exactly what the invoice said. And that's exactly what she did. And then, after recording it, she generated a check, which was her job. Okay, now, is that um, fiddling with business records? I mean, it seems so straightforward. To, I don't even understand the business records controversy. I don't know. What, she was asked to get a check. It was done. It was paid. It was paid for non-disclosure reasons. All right, we may or may not know. I'm not going to get into the Stormy Daniels thing here. But whatever. Uh, it's not the first time that politicians or celebrities want to withhold information and use these non-disclosed payments and so forth, uh, Will. What, what's wrong with this? This woman... She was given her orders, she wrote a check, and uh, I'm sure she mailed it out. Yeah, that's exactly right, Larry. I think Todd's opening argument was right on the money. Uh, there was no crime here. These were accurate business records being recorded by a mid-level Trump Organization official in New York while President Trump was off running the country from the White House. They accurately reflected payments to President Trump's lawyer. And everything that you're hearing here 
all of this conspiracy talk, all the talk about the 2016 election, it's a smokescreen to cover up for the fact that the basic facts that they need to prove, to prove that a crime was committed here, simply don't exist. President Trump didn't do anything wrong. He didn't break the law. And they can put up witness after witness after witness. They can relitigate the 2016 election. None of that will change the basic facts here that the jury is going to hear. And we're hopeful that a fair and impartial jury will return an acquittal for exactly that reason. All right, Byron, I want to get to the politics in a minute. Let me just play a little sound from um, uh, David Axelrod, Team Obama. Those guys are smart. Here's what he said yesterday or the day before. Take a listen, please. If he is a convicted felon, that's going to have material impact on him moving forward. If he should have a hung jury, which could happen, it could have the reverse effect, and it could be the beginning of his way out of this legal morass uh, that he's in, because he will use it to taint mm -hmm. all the other cases. So, Byron, um, if it's a hung jury, he will use it to taint all the other cases. And the other point I'd raise, politically, I thought the Supreme Court's hearing yesterday about the immunity issue was quite favorable to Mr. Trump. And even if the court doesn't make a decision, I guess they'll come out with something in June-ish. They'll remand it to a lower court, which is going to take a long time. So, Byron, I, I don't, I'm going to, politically, is the Biden lawfare campaign, as I put it, is that losing steam? Is it even backfiring? Well, it, it certainly backfired in the Republican primaries, where we saw that all the indictments actually increased Trump's popularity with the Republican electorate. Now, in the general election, uh, the purpose is to affect those voters, those swing voters who might otherwise vote for Donald Trump, but who would not vote for him, uh, or they say they wouldn't, if he were a convicted felon. The whole purpose of this Alvin Bragg trial is to be able to call Donald Trump a convicted felon. Now, we just had a new poll out from Quinnipiac, which is asked now last month and this month, um, if Trump were convicted, would that make you less likely to vote for him or more likely to vote for him? And the number of people who say it would make him more likely actually went up in the last month, <laughs> right. and the number who say it would make them less likely actually went down yeah. in the last month. Yeah. And that's when people have been able to actually hear what's going on in the courtroom. And you know what else is kind of fun here, Byron, on this? Um, uh, as you know, Mr. Trump is making use of whatever spare time he has uh, outside of this uh, courtroom yeah. downtown New York. So he goes into Harlem and talks to the bodegas and gets a big crowd. Yesterday, he went around the corner from our studios where there's a Midtown New York and met with the construction workers uh, who love the guy. Somebody came on Fox and Friends this morning and said, by three to one, union workers are going to vote for Trump. Uh, the poll came out yesterday. I don't know whose poll it was. Trump's only down 10 points in New York State. He lost it by 23 in 2020. He's closing in in New York, Byron. What does that tell you? <laughs> yeah, he may be running for governor. Uh, listen, no. the, these things actually don't, they don't happen by, by accident. Uh, the bodega visit was arranged ahead of time, made a real point about uh, Democrats and crime, specifically about Alvin Bragg and crime. The interesting thing about the stop yesterday at the construction site was that was Thursday morning. That happened just a few hours after Joe Biden in Washington uh, appeared before the uh, Association of Building Trades Unions. Mm. Uh, so all the kind of mucky mucks in suits, the union officials were there endorsing Joe Biden, and all the hard hats, the, the rank and file members who were working, yep. were cheering Donald Trump. That yep. was not an accident. Accident that those two came so close together. Well, Sharf, um, just give me 30 more seconds. Uh, immunity, give me your take on immunity. Will they make a decision? Will they remand lower courts? That's going to postpone the J6 trial. Won't even happen before the election. Yeah, look, I think the Supreme Court arguments yesterday couldn't have gone better for us. I, it was a lot of fun to be there. Uh, we, uh, we felt really good coming out of those arguments. I think the court is justifiably thinking about this in terms of how to protect the institution of the presidency in the long term from exactly these sorts of political prosecutions that we're seeing play out against President Trump today. Uh, we're hopeful that we get a good opinion out of them. Uh, the most likely result there would be a remand back to the district court for fact-finding around the immunity issue. I think the key takeaway, though, is, as you said, it's becoming increasingly unlikely that any of these other trials move to trial before the November 2024 election.
Thank you, gentlemen. Will Sharf and Byron York, terrific stuff. We appreciate it.